Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Yan Yu, founder of the Calgary Guide to Understanding Disease. Today we're going to be talking about asthma, findings on investigations. Please support us in our work by liking the video just as it's starting out and by subscribing to my channel. With that, let's get started. Asthma is a disease involving episodic airway constriction and airflow obstruction due to hyperresponsiveness of the airways in response to certain triggers. Please see the video on asthma pathogenesis for what these triggers are. Let's talk about the abbreviations that we'll use on this slide first. PFT stands for pulmonary function test. FEV1 stands for forced expiratory volume in one second. FVC stands for forced vital capacity. PaO2 stands for partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood. And PaCO2 stands for partial pressure of CO2 or carbon dioxide in the arterial blood. The investigations that we'll be talking about for asthma include spirometry, otherwise known as a pulmonary function test, which can be done before and after bronchodilator treatment. Other investigations include a bronchial hyperresponsiveness test, arterial blood gases, ABGs, and a chest x-ray, frontal and lateral views. So with asthma, what are the findings on investigations? First, patients can present with asthma when they're not suffering from an attack. If that's the case, and if spirometry and chest x-rays are done, then they'll most often be normal. However, you can do a bronchial hyperresponsiveness test, which has a higher sensitivity, a higher chance of picking up true disease. For this test, we use methacholine, an acetylcholine receptor agonist, which we make the patient inhale. The methacholine will agonize acetylcholine receptors on bronchial smooth muscles, and bronchial smooth muscles will constrict the airways if they are hyperresponsive. If low doses of methacholine can reduce the FEV1 by 20%, then that suggests asthma, although there's a high false positive rate. If high doses cannot reduce FEV1 by 20%, then that rules out asthma. The airways are not hyperresponsive. Asthma can also be measured via a peak expiratory flow meter, which can be given to patients to monitor lung function at home by themselves over several days. Episodic asthma attacks will lead to variable expiratory flow rates on different days, and asthma will manifest as variability in the peak expiratory flow of over 20% from day to day. Finally, we can also measure asthma during an asthma attack. During an attack, mucus will plug the airways in alveoli. That reduces the airway lumen diameter, and during expiration, positive pleural pressure squeezes on the airways to increase obstruction. That results in a total expiratory time that takes longer than normal, measured by an FEV1 of less than 80% and an FEV1 over FVC ratio of less than 0.7. All of these can be measured on spirometry. During an asthma attack, the airway smooth muscle constricts. That not only leads to reduced airway diameter that then increases the expiration time, but we can also stimulate airway smooth muscle dilation again with a short-acting beta agonist. And that's what's called the bronchodilator response test. In asthma, airway smooth muscles is not physically damaged, so they should be responsive to the short-acting beta agonist. Thus, a bronchodilator response test will generate a large increase in FEV1 of greater than 15 to 20 percent, which often fully restores FEV1. Finally, during an asthma attack, airway smooth muscle constriction will result in reduced ventilation of the alveoli, which reduces the oxygenation of blood, leading to hypoxemia, which reduces the PaO2. The respiratory centers will then increase the breathing rate to try to increase PaO2. That results in hyperventilation, where the patient breathes out more CO2, resulting eventually in hypocapnia, reduced partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the blood. Less arterial carbon dioxide will reduce the acidity of the blood, which will result in respiratory alkalosis, which can be measured on an arterial blood gas. And that's it for the findings on investigations of asthma. If you're interested in the asthma topic, you can check out the videos on asthma pathogenesis and asthma clinical findings next. Please support us in our work by liking the video and by subscribing to my channel. Thanks everybody, see you in the next video.